The Honda Ridgeline has long been the pickup truck choice for pragmatists, but for 2024, those practical shoppers now have a more off-roady option because this is the new 2024 Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport. In addition to the Trail Sport trim with more rugged capability, we have some important interior changes that are going to apply to all Ridgeline models. Let's take a look. I know some of you had been hoping that the Ridgeline would get a complete redesign for 2024. That is not the case. This is still related to the previous generation Pilot and the current generation Passport. But again, the Trail Sport trim is all new and with it comes upgraded off-road capability. Also, the availability of this unique Trail Sport blue color that you'll find in the Trail Sport Pilot and the Trail Sport Passport as well. Because a lot of this is carryover, we find the same partial LED headlight modules we had before with LED low beams, halogen high beams there. We have fog lights down at the very bottom of the bumper and the turn signal is located in that lower portion of the bumper trim. The grill has been updated for the Trail Sport trim, not just because of that Trail Sport badge, but we also get a unique look and a unique color there. We get upgraded underbody protection, as you'd expect in an off-road vehicle as well. The Ridgeline has long been one of those easy to live with trucks, and that's gonna continue for 2024, again with the addition of the off-road capability. Honda says that they haven't just swapped in all-terrain tires. These are general grabber all-terrain tires and 18-inch alloy wheels. They've also modified the suspension to make it a little bit more off-road appropriate, also help improve some on-road driving dynamics when coupled with these off-road tires. But the format that has made the Ridgeline such a success is still here. We get a big practical cabin, nice and wide since it's based off of their mid-size three-row SUV, and then a big practical bed in the back. Unlike some of the competition, the body is not overly wide, so the bed is actually a little wider than some of the competition, because if you take a look at, say, a GMC Canyon, the aggressive fender flares really just mean that the bed is pushed further inboard. So this is really easy to get things in and out of the bed. I can actually put my hand completely flat in the bed with my feet flat on the ground. So if you're looking for a very practical vehicle that's easy to load cargo into, you definitely want to take a look at the Ridgeline. The midsize truck segment is really heating up in North America. The new Tacoma's on the horizon. GM has also recently completely redesigned the Colorado and the Canyon, and we already know what the new Ford Ranger is going to look like. So this is a very competitive set for the Ridgeline to be playing in, but I think it still stands out pretty nicely. They've given us a big Ridgeline embossed logo right there in the middle of the tailgate. Of course, the Trail Sport badging there on that side. And it still has the only trick tailgate in this segment, where not only does it fold down like a regular tailgate, it also opens to the side, sort of like a regular car door. Not only does that mean it's going to be easier to get cargo in and out of the bed of the Ridgeline, it makes it easier to access this in-floor trunk, which is another unique feature of the Ridgeline. We have a composite bed, also a really nice touch, so it's not going to dent, it's not going to rust, there's no need for a bed liner. And this certainly has one of the most practical cargo areas available in this mid-size segment. The only real downside for me is that there is no full-size spare tire available. It's a compact spare and it slots right there under the bed. Now, there is the advantage of that spare tire not getting dirty because it's not under the truck, but it's not a full-size spare tire and that is something that some folks might be interested in. Towing capacity still tops out at 5,000 pounds. There's a hitch receiver just there under the bumper step and then we have a seven-pin wiring harness connection on the side. If you're looking for a mid-sized truck in the U.S. with a naturally aspirated V6 engine under the hood, you're going to have two options for 2024, the Honda Ridgeline and the Jeep Gladiator, two definitely very different kinds of trucks. This engine is essentially the same as the one that we found under the hood last year. 3.5 liters, produces 280 horsepower and about 260 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to the same 9-speed automatic transmission that the Ridgeline has had for a while. The transmission is a little bit controversial. Not everybody cares for the way that it shifts, but Honda has continually upgraded the software, and personally, I don't mind it. What I think is going to be more important for some shoppers is the fact that the Ridgeline comes standard with all-wheel drive, and it's Honda's IVTM4 all-wheel drive system that has a really interesting rear axle. Not only does it provide torque vectoring functionality, it's the only mid-sized truck in America that will do that, it also provides limited slip functionality, and this is the only truck in North America that has that option standard. Of course, if you want to take off-roading to the next level, you won't find a two-speed transfer case or a true locking differential in the Ridgeline. If you want those features, you're certainly going to have to pay more, but they are available in some of the competition. Let's check out the interior changes for 2024. You'll notice that we have basically the same power seat controls over here for the driver. The seats, both front and rear, have not changed, which is why I'm going to take a little bit of a detour 
to the back seat area first because this has always been one of the most practical areas for the Ridgeline. Thanks to its design, we have a completely flat floor back here and lots of additional space that's inside the vehicle. You can see that the seats fold back like we used to find in the Honda Fit. The little support rail actually tucks in there as well, which allows us to have that completely flat floor down there. That flat floor now includes standard all-weather mats in the Trail Sport trim. We have nice big air vents there in the center console. And take a look at that center console actually itself. You notice it is definitely wider than the one that you will find in a lot of mid-sized trucks in the US. And that's because the Ridgeline is wider. The all-weather floor mats are standard in the Trail Sport trim. The only thing I think I would change would be the addition of a floor mat back there in that area as well, just to help keep things uh, in check if you're putting dirty cargo in here. You'll notice that in the center console, we have two big air vents and the center console itself is wider than in the competition. That's because the Ridgeline is one of the wider mid-sized trucks. If I fold down the seat, you can see it's an easy one-handed operation. It then locks down there into position. We get the contrasting stitching in this model. And again, you'll notice the wider seats in the seat back here. If you have a family with young children, you're definitely gonna appreciate the fact that we have a separate latch anchor set for the center seat position. And that should give you some idea of how wide the rear seat area is because you can actually fit three child seats across the back, something that you really can't do in most of the mid-sized truck competition. That should give you an idea of just how wide that rear bench is. Also an indication of how wide this is, we have a big rear armrest there with two big cup holders in the middle, and then there's some additional cup holders here on the rear doors. Now let's go ahead and move up front where we find yet more changes. The bulk of this interior is the same as 2023. So the dashboard, the doors, they're by and large the same, but we do get those Trail Sport all-weather floor mats down there. In the center of everything, we get a new infotainment system. This now has a nine inch touchscreen and it's using the software from the latest version of the Honda Civic on this large format screen. It supports wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto and all of the latest features that you get in some of those more recent Honda products, but it doesn't have the built-in Google Assistant, et cetera, that we find in the Accord. Down below that, we find essentially the same climate controls that we found before, auto uh, climate controls there, two zones for up front. We then get a big Qi wireless charging mat down here. This entire center console section has been redesigned to be wider. It's pretty similar to what we find in the Passport for 2024. We have the push button shifters here, two big cup holders that can now accommodate bigger Nalgene water bottles and a redesigned center console. Again, this should give you a bit of an idea of how wide this interior is. I definitely find this a little bit more practical than the previous center console design, and there's a nice big storage area underneath. On the driver's side, we find the same four-spoke steering wheel that we had before, but we find a new partial LCD instrument cluster behind it. You'll notice we have an approximately seven inch LCD over there on the left side, and then on this side, we have a physical speedometer. So kind of similar to what we've seen in the Honda Civic for a while. If you're interested in the moonroof, we still have one of those. It's a pretty standard sized moonroof just over the front row. And you can see that headroom on the inside is pretty decent for both the front row and the second row. But thanks to the Ridgeline's design, we actually get a little bit more legroom back here than I found in the recently redesigned Canyon and Colorado. You'll certainly notice that with this front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall. And we actually get a little bit more headroom in the back as well. Now for the bad news. I don't know how much the 2024 Ridgeline is going to cost. For 2023, the Ridgeline started at $38,800. My guess is that this is gonna be over $39,000 for 2024, plus of course the destination charge. You can bet that the Trail Sport trim is gonna be one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive trim. So my guess, somewhere around $49,000 to $50,000. That price tag may sound expensive, but when you compare the Ridgeline to a lot of the competition whose price tags have really grown lately, this actually comes across as quite a bit less expensive than the most recent Canyon and Colorado that I was driving. We don't know exact pricing on the 2024 Tacoma, but you can bet that a similarly capable version of the Tacoma is probably going to be more expensive than the Ridgeline. I know not everybody is going to be happy with the $39,000 to approximately $50,000 price range of the Ridgeline, but keep in mind the competition's price tags have really grown lately, and the GMC Canyon I was recently driving was about $70,000. Also keep in mind the Ridgeline has a ton of standard feature content, like the fold to the side tailgate, the composite bed, the standard all-wheel drive system, and of course the standard V6 engine as well. So when you really look at it, the Ridgeline is probably going to be the best or one of the best values in this mid-sized truck segment. And it's certainly gonna appeal to shoppers that are interested in a traditional naturally aspirated V6 engine. Also, people that just want a more practical, pragmatic truck with decent fuel economy, a lot of convenience features, something that's comfortable, 
easy to drive, easy to live with as well. Clearly, if you want the ultimate in off-roader, if you want front lockers, rear lockers, et cetera, a two-speed transfer case, you're gonna have to spend an awful lot more and you're gonna have to look at something without a Honda logo on it. Also, if you wanna tow over 5,000 pounds, you're gonna have to take a look at some of those competitors, but you're gonna have to give up some of the practical touches that we find in the Ridgeline. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comments section below, and hopefully we will be off-roading in a Ridgeline Trail Sport over the next year or so. I'm definitely interested to test out the increased capability of the Trail Sport, the combination of the extra grip from the all-terrain tires, coupled with the limited slip and torque vectoring functionality of the rear axle, and the really high body rigidity that we find in the Ridgeline is really gonna make this an intriguing option for someone that wants to go a little further off the beaten path but maybe doesn't need to conquer Moab every random Wednesday. Hit that subscribe button down there. Be sure and find us at Twitter, Facebook, Threads, X, all those social places, and I'll see all of you next week.